I'll say I've got nothing left. That actually makes the editing uh, easier. Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from Number One Projects, Hovar from Behind the Mistakes, and me, KJ, from Crude But Efficient, who since we last we recorded is one year older. Woohoo! Woohoo! Happy birthday, KJ! Happy Thanks. birthday! <laughs> what are you, 25? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you could you could think that perhaps. Um, <laughs> but when I, I, when I said I was actually at work uh, when it was my birthday, so I uh, gave them some cookies and 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 they asked, "Oh, how old are you?" Well. Guess, oh, oh, 35? Oh, thanks. I said, is it lower? <laughs> no, no, <it's> really not. <laughs> that's the that's the day I'm starting to shave again. That's when people start guessing I'm older than I'm actually am. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we the baby faces. Years ago, when I was uh, 24, I worked in a garden center. I was chatting to one of the women one day, and she said, uh, we've gone to age. And I said, oh, I'm 24. She went, really? I went, yeah. She said, I thought you were early 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's really evil to say. I've always looked older, KJ. I'm only just starting to look my age now. <laughs> Not the wrong side of 40. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had, I don't remember who said it, but they said if you ever get in a squeeze where you have to guess a lady's age, you guess 24. And the reasoning <laughs> behind that was everyone below 24, they will be flattered because you think they're 24 because that's like, okay, they're, they're more grown up, more mature. And everyone over 24 will also be flattered before uh, because you're actually guessing a younger age, but <laughs> not too young. And I don't know how he got that empirical data, but it seemed reasonable uh, from what he said that oh, 24 is a number. So I've actually tried it a few times when you like get put on the spot and, oh, yeah, how old do you think I am? 24. Works every time. Yeah. <laughs> you got any other pickup tips, have I? <laughs> well, let me let me get my hair black book of uh, wizardry here. <laughs> so it's more of a pamphlet. It's well, it's basically a, a napkin <laughs> <laughs> with one sentence on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like don't beg. <laughs> if she offers you tea, she means something else. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the newest entry, actually. <laughs> and then it's uh, in parentheses underneath, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you? Have how have your weeks been? God damn it, I can't talk this evening. Uh, my week's been very nice, thank you. Yeah. And why is that? that? <laughs> Well, it's just been a little bit quiet around here. Um, my wife and daughter have gone away for half term. So um, it's just been me, Jack and Dave hanging out, all the boys together. Boys night every night. Yep, every <laughs> night. <laughs> um, yeah, got a bit of making done as well over the weekend. Nothing for YouTube or anything, just some silly projects for friends. So I um, made a hairbrush fat. And also made a spiky thing for the bottom of a fruit press. <laughs> <laughs> um, making a hairbrush fat. I think you need to elaborate on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving me images that I really don't want. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine, she's uh, she struggles gripping things. Mm. And um, she asked if she found a wooden hairbrush, could I make the handle much, much fatter on it? Which I did. It was a nice, oh, yeah. nice Saturday night thing. While you were out at the show, I was playing in the workshop, yeah. sculpting a round handle. Well, that and is then, actually uh, the nicer projects where it actually has a purpose and it actually helps someone uh, achieving yeah. something. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it was nice. It was a quick one as well. You know, mm. hour and a half mm. job done. 
So then I made this uh, spiky thing for the bottom of the fruit press, which uh, again I impressed myself with that. That turned out pretty well. Made out of teak, of course. Of course. Didn't want to get didn't want to get rid of the nice wood. I mean. <laughs> Is there any other material? <laughs> Not now. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that. <laughs> and then I, uh, I've actually started on my next video, um, but very, very quickly ran into problems today with that. The planar thickness there, every time I decided to switch it on, it, it uh, knocked out all the power in the house. That's not mm. a good sign. No, no. So I took it to bits, no wires fried. Everything looked normal. The motor wasn't even hot. Um, did it spin up or did it... Br- for a second. For a second. I did use it for a short while and it was fine. And then it, um, it after a couple of passes, it started on this problem. Um, fired a quick message over to Tim at Turgworks. Because you know, he's a fantastic electrician, as we know. Um, I mean... He rang me straight back, which was nice. If anybody has a problem, give Tim a call. He'll call you straight back. <laughs> um, but as it turns out, it's just a nice conversation because he actually doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, it's a win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, it was Moral nice. support. Yeah, it was a nice, nice little video call with Tim for a bit. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's still got its face off and it's uh, not working still. Hmm. That's not nice. That's uh, sad. Yeah. The only thing, it's got a capacitor in the switch, and I don't know whether that's blown. It's just, it looks visibly fine, but I don't know how to test that, so I was going to ask you guys about that, actually. I can't think of anything else that would be wrong with it. Yeah, you just uh, you turn the power on, and then you put your tongue over the two contact points for the capacitor, <laughs> and then you'll find out if it works or not. <laughs> <laughs> on there first and then put the uh, put the power on because it flicks out so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't quite lick it in time. I have no idea actually and I don't understand why there should be a capacitor in the switch. I mean for the start, to start the motor it's usually a capacitor and it's, if that's blown and it's actually short circuited then that could, could kill it. But as you say I mean th- those are r- are rather rough. Uh, they can take a beating, so it's it's you should you you can probably see it if it's if it's bad. Yeah. And I mean, if you have a multimeter, you might be able to measure it. I have got a multimeter, but I don't know how to use it. Mm. Yeah, then it's tricky. <laughs> 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 I turned yeah, it on. It... Turned that on today and ran it through some settings, and nothing seemed to change on it. it just kept reading zero, and occasionally but... it would go up to four. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now it doesn't start at all, but it did in the beginning. It does start a little bit. It starts for a second and then flicks the power out. Yeah, because it's weird because when you flick it on, it, it consumes the most power at startup. So, I mean, yeah. if, the, if the capacitor was there to help it with the boost, it should maybe not try and start at all. I'm not sure. Yeah, I yeah. was thinking that as well, but... Hmm. It's well, funny. I've, buy a new I've, one. Buy a bigger I've, one I've, with a helical head. That's the easy <laughs> solution. And then ask if they have a discount if you order two. I need one. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to ask what the shipping is to Norway? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, aren't you coming over for a Scarpet Festival and you can have it as carry on? <laughs> yeah, so that's as, uh, that's as far as I've got with my making today anyway. How about you, Havar? Well, I've I've been doing um, the same kind of making. I'm trying to help someone uh, and doing electrical work. Um, uh, my two beautiful daughters, they have uh, uh, a disco light that they got for their grandfather. And that's uh, it's in use almost every day. Um, <laughs> but then it didn't work. And of course, uh, my wife realized that it was tripping breakers left and right wherever she tried it. So I had a quick look at it. And of course, the the wire, uh, the insulation has come on off uh, right at the attachment place. And then, of course, uh, there was no problem seeing where the short circuit was. So I cut the wire short and I resoldered it and fixed it and tested it, worked beautifully. And then I started inspecting the wire and then I just 
twisted it ever so slightly and then I broke the insulation again. So all the rubber insulation is gone. So it's basically a fire hazard waiting to happen. So I had to mm. throw it away. So I guess I need to buy a new one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good way to find out at least. Yeah. And not, uh, Daddy, it's burning. <laughs> what That's is not that what you want to hear? <laughs> no. Disco Inferno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a disco should not, should not be that kind of Inferno. No. Uh, no. <laughs> and then, while we're on electrical work, I also started my next project. Um, it's the hot table, as I've uh, called it. Um, <laughs> and I just actually just filmed the intro and when i looked at the footage my camera is auto adjusting the iso so whenever any background lighting turns on and off it auto adjusts and it looks really crappy and i realized that on most cameras as well as my dslr i can actually lock the iso I can actually just do a metering and then I can lock it and then it stays that way. Yeah. But that is not a function on this camera. And uh, tried to Google every left and right to figure it out. And no, Sony didn't choose to put that in this camera, which is really annoying. So I spent last night just uh, trying to figure out and learn how the the manual settings works because I have to start shooting in manual mode for certain settings so mm. my project just ended up in me uh, watching tutorials on uh, camera settings <laughs> yeah sounds like fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah i bought the one that oh this one is brilliant for youtubing and the auto everything is perfect you just uh, click and shoot and here i am fuck <laughs> <laughs> i love everybody else's solutions for trying to figure out problems they do research they watch videos they read manuals I just get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I hope things yeah, well, fix themselves. I do that first and then I click around. But of course, as any camera these days, it has a million different settings. And they are, of course, divided in sections and subsections. And so you can actually, it's a maze. Well, I'm just noticing something a bit different, Havard. Oh, you are you, uh, watching over you, my shoulder. <laughs> have you organ, have you organized your office? <laughs> oh yes, oh, nice. Reorganized. <laughs> well, I'm, so, I'm, I'm I'm one of those. I have like a. I have been considering becoming an organ donor, but then again, it's like mm, I don't like giving things away. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I moved the organ inside. I was, uh, uh, like you, I was home alone. Uh, the missus and the kids were out a few hours here on Saturday, and I was uh, just, well, it has wheels, and it's not as heavy as I <laughs> thought, so just rolled it outside in the snow and then backed it in the door and just uh, humped it over <laughs> the threshold and then uh, <laughs> rolled it in. <laughs> so, so there it is. Sounds like the beginning to your wedding night. <laughs> 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 yeah, except the snow. <laughs> <laughs> so if you got to do the shopping for a week and put the kids to bed every night for a month and stuff like that to pay your penance to the wife now? Well, I I, I did not say anything about it. I, I just did it. <laughs> and then well, whenever she comes in here, then we'll deal with it. And <laughs> she, she hasn't noticed but, uh, yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, she actually uh, she noticed this yesterday, and she didn't say anything. So, either it's okay or it's the silent treatment. So. I'm just gonna <laughs> still a bit gonna, on the fence. <laughs> just gonna fire her a message over on Instagram to ask her what she thinks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to practice some tunes now for Valentine's and so play something <laughs> <laughs> romantic from uh, an Italian movie or something. <laughs> What about you then, KJ? After all these celebrations, mm -hmm. have you managed to get anything making done? Yeah, yeah. Well, since uh, last episode, I finished the I finished uh, the knife along uh, thing and uh, filmed everything as well. And and while I was doing that, the final steps, you know, when you're a little bit 
hesitant to do something because you're afraid to mess it up. I actually started my next project instead, just to God. just to click more or less to clear my head. I think to, <laughs> because I felt I needed to do something else for yeah. for a second or two. Uh, so that's uh, been laying on my uh, workbench. Uh, the glue up. Uh, I think it's probably done by now because it's been there for like four days. So I think the glue is dried. <laughs> it's as dry as it's going to be, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I can take the clamps off, uh, hopefully. <laughs> so you've still got a little bit of uh, footage to shoot then if you're using the knife. No, no. Uh, all of that is uh, is done. I just haven't gotten around to... I realized... Uh, that I promised I should, I, I was going to send you some pictures of it, but I never did. <laughs> I'll do that after this. Uh, yeah. Um, this recording. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so... I'm halfway through the the edit, the uh, the fine pass, so to say. Yeah. Cool. I'm so glad you mentioned a knife and that we actually segued into sending. Um, I finished all the editing. I actually reshot the outro and it's <laughs> I was considering keeping both footage in side by side and then you can see it's I say the identical same thing but the first version was filmed by I was homesick and really <laughs> off and you could you could see it and it was the same day we did the podcast recording and Tim said you're not looking. <laughs> You're not looking good for a fit for work, mate. <laughs> so, and it really shows. Um, and then we had a discussion here um, on the chat where KJ mentioned uh, you can never trust the Swedish postal service. And uh, I think uh, I have to admit that uh, that's a realization I made as well. Um, I was going to have a surprise for both of you today, um, but that didn't happen. But Glenn, uh, you can get up and have a look in the basket of your wife's bicycle. Okay. Whilst he off uh, headphones and so on, I've been uh, conspiring with his wife for a week, sm <laughs> smuggling a package into his workshop without his knowledge. <laughs> Ooh. That's really impressive. <laughs> I thought you'd sent me a bike helmet for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, What's this? Been. Well, now... Uh... You can, well. you can hold it up for the camera and then I can take a oh it's a it arrived actually Un un yeah. unscathed that's yeah, nice. the postman Boom, stock didn't nice. eat this one <laughs> <laughs> can't get into it I've not got a knife <laughs> yeah, that's the problem that's like buying scissors yeah, <laughs> you need a scissor to open the packaging well that sounds uh yeah, that's that's a good sound for a podcast. <laughs> yeah, a bit close to the mic. <laughs> yeah, well, a bit. Hopefully, I can do something about that in the edit. Mm. Let's see. Yeah. Put it on the floor. What we got here then? Oh, <laughs> wowza! Thank you. You're welcome. I got a knife. Ooh. Harvard has sent me a wooden knife. I Walnut. actually made I made four knives actually for yeah. the challenge with the uh, with the intent nice. of giving two of them away. Um, unfortunately, the other one um, is lost somewhere in the Swedish wood woods <laughs> uh, or postal systems or whatnot. I, I was planning That's on fantastic. getting your Thank wife you. to hide it behind the pastry sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I've just seen this. <laughs> now that's a knife. <laughs> so what we've got here is a picture of Crocodile Dundee with the saying, now that's a knife, but it's got her vase head on it. <laughs> that is going on the wall, mate. <laughs> 
that's oh, fantastic. I had, a, had a lot of fun making that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think our listeners need to go to Instagram to see the. Yeah, I'll get that this. up on Instagram. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> So you've been collabing with the wife, have you? <laughs> oh yes, I've been having a lot of fun. <laughs> been planning this for three or four weeks. So. <laughs> well, um, while we're on the subject of making multiples of things, I might as well come clean, seeing so it doesn't look like you're going to ever get your birthday present, KJ. And the light sign that I made there, I made you a perfect miniature of that. <laughs> oh, how sweet. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting really mad with the postal system. <laughs> and there was also a, uh, a nice stencil in there with your logo on it, so to stop you taping and cutting <laughs> for a while. <laughs> and then a bit of tea and some chocolate. So sorry that didn't make it to you, but the yeah. intention was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's a question. Is of course it's a. Uh... It's a return to sender there, so at some point it should either get there or be returned, unless it's lost in the great void of the postal service. But we'll yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel like the the postal system here is is way off. I mean, I I've ordered some stuff from the UK and that hasn't arrived yet either, and I don't actually know if uh, I realized a while back that. Tim, uh, Turworks Tim, was going to send me an electric sign. And I don't know if he actually sent it off because I never received one anyway. So maybe that was lost in the post as well. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stop sending stuff, I think. Or this, or, or stop <laughs> trying to receive stuff, it feels. Because there's sending sweet, actually works. There's a Swedish postman out there with all these weird gifts, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give it a few years and you, uh, you see some news clip or something that caught this uh, postal worker hoarding <laughs> yeah. various uh, posts incoming. Yeah, All his family and friends are like, he gives the best gifts at Christmas. You don't <laughs> find any of that stuff on the high street. <laughs> He's so original. I don't know where he shops. <laughs> it's like this beautiful custom things and weird artifacts and... <laughs> angle grinders he has so much angle grinders I don't know where it gets him from <laughs> oh, oh that's a sad note oh sneaky sneaky Havard. I like that thank you <laughs> and the best thing is I, I didn't even send it to your wife I sent it to her mother so you shouldn't <laughs> see the <laughs> so you shouldn't see the package in the mail and that, that was her idea well, sometimes he checks the mail before. Send it to my mother. Here's her address. I'll let her know there is a knife coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you send her a sticker as well? <laughs> oh, that would have been brilliant, but no. <laughs> All right. Maybe I should. I have her address. <laughs> <laughs> I'm truly Machiavellian of you. <laughs> the king of sneakiness. Yeah, she is, she is a maker as well. KB Creative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fabulous. But well, then that again, uh, <laughs> I actually started planning this before Michelle started to make the other butter knife. So, of course, you, you have a perfectly fine butter knife already. So, I know, but now I have two. Yeah. That's always better than sure. one. Dual wielding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you can have one for butter and one for jam. So, so you, <laughs> ah, so you yeah, don't have to course. mix them. Yeah, yeah. and they, they look different. So, you know that you're, yeah. Yeah, you've just you've just entered into another challenge unknowingly. This is going to be uh, have to go up against the tomato challenge now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So it's walnut on the top. What's the wood on the bottom? Is that oak? No, it's actually uh, is um, it's teak on oh. the top, and then it's uh, oh, is it? Oh, you got a dark bit of teak. And uh, yeah, and then I'm not sure what it's how it's pronounced, but beach. Yeah. 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 That's the that's the other one. I have Excellent. a lot of that for various uh, IKEA furniture I dismantled. So that's uh, ah, that's okay. where I get a lot of materials. I just because people are giving away hmm. IKEA furniture, and some of the cheapest ones in like wood, it, it's actually beach. So it's uh. It's really durable and nice. Just so. for um, 
if there's any other plant nerds out there, Fagus sylvatica, if you want the botanical name. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fa- fakes? Fagus. Sylvatica. Fagus. <laughs> yeah. Fagus hmm. sylvatica. Yeah. Oh, well, now oh. my wife will be happy to get her fill <laughs> of Latin, I think. There we go. How many oh. other people can we make happy tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I've already forgotten it, so. <laughs> <laughs> we spoke about the um, light box again briefly a minute ago. And um, what I forgot to mention last week when I was talking about my video was the cameo that you two did for me in it. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what a pair of lovely divas you both are. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, really yeah. fun when you get, can you send me a video of you being not impressed um about what oh, i can't tell you so, <laughs> what kind of setting do you want it in no i can't tell you so it's just, no, all right no, no, just no. figure out something no you didn't ask any questions at all you didn't ask about setting or anything and that is what i love about youtube because you just say yep okay yeah, it was... <laughs> you just send me whatever you interpret and i think it's fantastic yeah it was a good enough direction i I felt I knew yeah. what to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, you gave me about ten different takes. The last one being absolutely hilarious. I might have to put that out there for Instagram at some point. <laughs> yeah. You do what you like with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's embarrassing. I think it's brilliant. And then um, Avard came up with, "I'm going to pretend to be asleep and then wake up and tell you I'm unimpressed." <laughs> so where, does, where the hell does that come from? <laughs> I'm not sure. I was just sitting here and, oh, no, I forgot about the video thing. I have to film something. And all right, I'm not impressed. So, all right. And, and then, all right, pretend to be asleep and uh, <laughs> imagining or envisioning that Glenn just comes on. Hey, 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 look at this. Look at this. And you're waking up and like, uh, not impressed. <laughs> Let me be. <laughs> I think it was great. Yeah. Well, thank you anyway. That was that's why I brought it up. I just wanted to say thanks for that. I do appreciate it. Yeah, we really should utilize that more. Not not too much, but more than we do. <laughs> yeah. And that being said, um, you, you, you two sent some clips this week and I was kind of on, on the edge on maybe I should do the same. Uh, because you actually have both a cameo in my next video, the knife video. Then I think it's no, no. They they should see it at the premiere, so I'm not sending anything. <laughs> but we've a, we've not sent you teaser. any clips, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, as far as you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has Michelle been secretly filming me? Yeah. <laughs> God, I hope I wasn't on the toilet. Michelle, we're out of toilet paper. <laughs> 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 well, that's a scary thought actually <laughs> being secretly filmed by oh, yeah. that's why I always shut the door because <laughs> you just don't know in this house anymore is that no. why <laughs> no other reason <laughs> no, no. no everybody loves the smell of lavender <laughs> I used to lock my door and still there are some tiny fingers under the crack. It's like, <laughs> someone's in there. What are you doing in there? And then today I was home alone with the kids and then I just heard a loud bang in the door and like, should I open the door to see if someone is not breathing on the other side? And then it's like <laughs> another loud bang. And I'm like, okay, I open the door. What's going on? Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but don't say sorry i asked you a question what are you doing uh uh it wasn't me it was her oh my god yes again but what are you doing and then they were ramming the door with uh like the miniature trolley they have and it's like <laughs> why well that's just sort of <laughs> like, it's it's a random things kids do like on the whim without any purpose or thought behind it and then <laughs> when you ask them about it they're like huh <laughs> <laughs> they just realize that there are other people in the universe and someone has actually seen them what they were doing yeah well i think uh, we're all still guilty of going off and doing random things aren't we 
definitely, but <laughs> we can mostly come up with some kind of excuse why we did it, I think. <laughs> Is that being a grown-up, you actually can think of something yeah. to excuse <laughs> right. your behavior. Well, the, you might not have a reason, but you, you know how to lie. I <laughs> uh, needed to test something. <laughs> Don't ask anymore. <laughs> so it's um, you've had another holiday in um, Sweden today, haven't you? Yes, yes. Today is Fat Tuesday, as we call it. <laughs> that would be the translation. Is that when all the fat people come out and dance around a maypole? <laughs> you could think no i think the it's the it's the last big hurrah before the the fast uh, uh when you don't uh, eat. eat anything for yeah. like 40 days uh but that's an old religious thing that we don't really do anymore but we kept the the part the thing where you actually eat a lot <laughs> <laughs> but we don't really care about not eating after it uh so then, uh, then we have the traditional semla, which is a uh, a wheat flour bun, uh, cardamom flavored, with uh, almond paste and whipped cream in it. Oh, nice! Yeah, it's really tasty. Um, nice. Maybe something for Michelle to try. Yo, to... good plan, good plan. <laughs> we'll get her on that. Yeah, that so really that's a, yeah. So here that's... it's uh, here it's Shrove Tuesday. It's pancake day today. Ah, yeah, same here. I've heard yeah. about Fat Tuesday, and I'm now a bit unsure if that is because we lived in Sweden, or if they, that being a Norwegian thing as well. But I haven't I heard anyone talk about it until you mentioned it. So it's been Pancake Day today, and that's uh, easy. Also, with I, being alone with I, the kids, <laughs> I think it's mainly a Swedish and Finnish thing, because at least the 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 Swedish speaking part of Finland does it as well. They call it uh, fastlagsbulle instead, but it's more more or less the That's same. Catchy, thing. yeah, yeah. And I good. mean, it's it's estimated that that Sweden eats uh, forty million semla uh, uh, on this part of the year, and what was it I said? Uh, Six million just today. Um, because how many I mean, did you eat? Uh, uh, just the one, because yeah. every every company more or less buys them for their employees because otherwise their otherwise their employees get get cranky <laughs> <laughs> because you're supposed to do it like this. But that being said, we, we have that in Norway as well. We have the Fastle Lavensbolle, which is then of course connected to the word fasting, but I think the the religious or historical connection has been lost for years. But yeah, those buns are sold in the stores all over the place these days. Yeah, nice. But we don't so get them at work. Hmm. Are your pancakes a bit crap like ours, or are they the American style? Oh, I don't like the American style. I like the proper yeah. thin ones. Yeah, crepes. Yeah, crepes. Nice. <laughs> crepes. A bit crepe crepes. or a bit crap? <laughs> <laughs> I said crap. <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, what do you have some... on them? Oh, it's... Uh... It's usually either strawberries or blueberries. Um, the, the kids love that. Um, I'm not that into putting jam on them. Of course, I, I do like it, but if I can prefer, it's bacon. You just roll oh, a strip nice. of bacon in it. Yeah, that's all. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. And then, of course, I think it was my grandparents who did it. And then again, my parents. Then you also put like sugar on top of that before you roll yeah. it. Um, but sometimes you can just put sugar into the the mix or whatever when you're making them. So, yeah. When I was a kid, it was um, sugar and lemon juice or sugar and orange juice on top of mm. the pancake. Yeah, orange and juice. Then, that, I'll try that. Yeah, and now we've uh, we've progressed to Nutella and bananas. And family <laughs> home. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I did today is, and um, when you're having Strawberry jam, uh, that's a very nice combination with uh, Norwegian brown cheese. So I actually had brown cheese and strawberry jam because I couldn't be bothered 
to bring two kids to the store just to get bacon today because they were in a terrible mood when I picked them up from kindergarten. So, nope, we are going straight at home and you'll be playing whilst I make the pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thin pancakes, I prefer uh, jam and uh, uh, Greek yogurt. So, but yeah. but when you when you go bacon, I want the thick pancake you make in the oven instead and sprinkle ba- bacon into it and eat it with lingonberry jam because oh, that's, that's a sw- sweetest thing. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. I've had yeah. lingonberry jam, obviously, because we've got Ikea. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the only place I think I've seen it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, lingonberry was a hard commodity in Sweden back in the days. I think it was uh, the, the lease my great-grandfather got for the, the farm it was like a small amount of actual cash, uh, one one person day labor for a year, and like eighty liters of lingonberries picked wow. in the forest. That that was what the farm cost, <laughs> the cost of having the farm. So that's I mean, it, if it wasn't for lingonberries, I think we Sweden would have died of scurvy back in the famine days. Uh, it's like the only source of vitamin C we got in abundance. Is it a is it a, a variant of blueberry lingonberry? No, it's a uh, lot uh, uh, more sour. I would say. Yeah. So it's I mean it's 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 a bit it's it grows in the same places as blueberries, but it's uh, but it's not. Uh, it not doesn't grow singular. It's more in a what's it called when they, they grow uh, together. A lot of them, so it's oh, much easier yeah, to pick yeah. them as well. And they're a lot uh, stiffer than blueberries, so they don't you don't get blue fingers from it. Oh, okay. So that's no. Yeah. But that that being said, that they are not edible before you have made jam uh, with a lot of sugar. <laughs> yeah, you oh. you need to be real hardcore to eat them straight off. That's mm. yeah. No, they they're too sour for that. Okay, so it is a blueberry. It is a it is a form of blueberry. I just looked it up quickly. Ah. So it's a, a vasinum. Okay. Which is a, which is blueberry. Okay. Yeah, so it's just a different variant on that. Uh, <laughs> well, that's yep. Uh, they're 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 they I'm sure they're from the same family, but they're really different siblings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. In theory, being, I mean, being Ling- the Ling- Lingonberry is that middle child. <laughs> <laughs> being of the same genus, you could uh, theoretically cross the two, though. That would be weird. Yeah, it makes it really hard for combining the names as well. That doesn't work. You can go Lingonberry or, <laughs> or Blueberry. <laughs> Blingon. It just doesn't work. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a bl- blue lingon or berry berry. <laughs> <laughs> berry berry is actually kind of nice, but yeah. doesn't really say what it is. <laughs> oh, it's easy on the kids as well. I want berry berry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if you could, if you could combine the taste and not the blue fingers, and if it grows more together, so it's easier to pick, that would be a nice combo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the lingonberry bushes looks really good in the the forest as well. A dark green look, and it's a good uh, what's it called that co- uh, low growing that covers the ground. Ground cover, yeah, ground covering. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's easier than you than you think. Yeah. Just gotta switch things around a bit, KJ. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, I we try need that a, and it doesn't. We need a, a Latin word, word for this, and we need a fancy word for this. But <laughs> what do we call it? When ground cover. <laughs> <laughs> it it would be a prostrate habit. <laughs> That sounds like a disease. It does. Sounds like a bit of a bowel problem, doesn't it? Yeah, something in the nether regions, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Let's change the subject. KJ, tell us about your new video that you released yesterday. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a, an experiment that I, I actually got the idea for it back when uh, Fix It Fingers were, was on. And we talked about supercuts. So what's what? 
what's the, uh, the opposite of a supercut, but that's a shortcut. What would a shortcut <laughs> look like? Well, how how many videos can you jam into? <laughs> jam into a short instead. Of, well, it's uh, uh, if you change the format, then you could put three videos at the same time and <laughs> and just speed them up so they both run at a minute and. And just I thought put, it was fantastic. And just put the worst, uh, those uh, TikToky music. I mean, I, that I hear from the kids' phones all the time. Take the best yeah. one of those and try and see if it's it works. Yeah. So what's the it's, stats? It's... Bad. <laughs> 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 but I'm, I'm gonna try. I have done four of them, so I'm gonna try and list them and see. Just try doing them at different times, KJ. See if it makes a different any difference to them. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that to yeah. to yeah. try and in in the next couple of days. I think so. it says a lot about me because I enjoyed the length of the video. I enjoyed the music, <laughs> <laughs> and and I tried to 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 fit it out because it's three videos, and I sorted all my videos uh, after length, and then I took one short, one medium, and one long. So you get them at different speeds depending on what's your yeah. frame rate, so to speak. <laughs> you can either watch a I mean, the first video was actually one minute, so that's barely sped up at all. But the middle one last was like five minutes, and the long one was like eight, nine minutes. Ah, it was a feast for the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it should be uh, have a lot of replayability as well, because you can't really see all the things at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, it was a stupid little thing I had to try. I think it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're free to try your own. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like a, a three by three pattern, and then you can jam nine videos into one. Of course, the, <laughs> the watchability will plummet, but then again, uh... yeah. But a, a lot of things are not really watchable in the shorts category. Uh, it does have the possibility of being watched nine times though from one viewer, doesn't it? So it does have some scope. Yeah, but I I don't think it registers <laughs> like views on the individual videos because if it oh, did, then yeah. of course I would jam everyone into a one second clip, and then <laughs> by the time Bang. by the time people realize that oh that's a loop, I've got like a million views in. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people actually did that on. Uh, Instagram, but I, I don't think it works anymore. They, they took a picture, but instead of posting it like a picture, they posted it as a reel, uh, and then you set the video duration to one yeah. second. So, when if people had it up for ten seconds watching it, you got like ten views on a video. But hmm. um, I think that doesn't work anymore. But if you put up a, a one-second YouTube video. That should get really good retention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of views, uh, but not that much view time. But that's that's oh, that's that's beautiful because I've I've sent I forwarded a few videos to some friends where it's like just a security camera, and it says like, "Watch what happens." <laughs> and then it's just looping the video and then of course the question is how long will the other person watch the video before we realize this is a bit too long and then <laughs> what the fuck nothing is happening in that oh i've been fucked <laughs> <laughs> you could do that as well put in like a loop and uh, just leave it there and just wait for the end <laughs> it never comes <laughs> so much gentler than the uh scam videos i've been sent by my friends anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> well let's uh let's linger a bit here uh... <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had any of those videos that you open up and they're really noisy and inappropriate <laughs> <laughs> oh, well no i don't think i have those that kind of friends I have. Uh... I, I feel I'm gonna get some now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do have that type of friend. <laughs> I don't. I don't usually click on any links, even from persons that I know. Uh, but there was one time at my last workplace because on my work computer, <laughs> I'm not as careful as like. I mean, if it's something bad, it's IT's problem, not mine. It's not my computer. So okay, I open it and then. 
uh, a colleague of mine sent me uh, an Excel sheet uh, with some uh, details about the uh, negotiations, so, so such and such. And like, oh, okay, that's irrelevant. So I just opened it. And then it was a script where that Excel sheet, it, it closes all the windows uh, open on your screen. So you just end up with your, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, desktop. And then it changed the background picture of two guys hugging erotically. <laughs> and then I just burst out laughing because this is brilliant. And I just forwarded that email to everyone I knew. And of course, we were sitting in an open landscape. And one of my colleagues is really like a bit uptight. And he got really mad because, of course, he just clicked at it uh, just like anyone else. And then that popped up and he actually had a double large screen set up and of course a lot of people around him and then just pop <laughs> and it, it wasn't anything indecent or something it was like the two chippendales giving each other a hug uh, so but he really felt bad and of course he panicked because he didn't really understand what happened and of course what, what do i do and he got really angry it's like hey, would you just go and change the background and you're fine <laughs> so, uh, the office life. That's, uh, <sighs> <laughs> Wouldn't know. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, I've been in the office both yesterday and today uh, because I I, I have a, a student who's I'm supposed to teach, I guess. So I, I, I've been there to help out. But now I'm, I'm the rest of the week. I'm I'm working from home. So nice. <laughs> Because I can't stand going into the office every day of the week. I don't really know how I did it before the pandemic. Because then it was five days a week. Not a thing. But since you you could start working from home, it really feels like a drag. Are you working from home tomorrow in quotation marks? I'm working from home. (laughs) That depends on the workload. (laughs) But I've seen a few videos recently where, and of course, we have it at my workplace as well, where everyone in management and HR, they are trained in the regular setup of a workplace where everybody turns up to work and they are there physically. And of course, in the pandemic, they were forced uh, to work remotely. But now more and more companies are falling back into that, that they they want people to be more and more in the office. Um, And I feel it's a bit of a diverging feeling there because management want people back. And that's the same with us. They they want us to be more in the office because, yeah, it's more collegial and uh, better for the work environment and you get to see people. But people are sitting and thinking, well, I have a better office at home and every task that we are supposed to do gets done. So why do I have to spend two hours driving to and from work when I can do everything that's in my work description from home? And of course, yeah, you can go to the office and sit in a meeting room, but you can also have those meetings on team. But when you are there, people just come by to talk to you. So you can actually be more efficient at home. Uh, yeah, at definitely. least a lot of us. Um, like yesterday, I had two meetings and they were Teams meetings. And of course, I don't have to stress getting to work, sitting in traffic and it's snowing. So probably you could risk getting stuck in traffic. But still, management are inching back to there. They want to have people there because they have the illusion of more control. And it's it's really fun to see that playing out. And of course, uh, I'll, I've talked to a lot of my colleagues and they say, well, if they if they want us to come back in the office, then I'll switch jobs because there are other companies who are actually putting that out there that, of course, we will give you the added salary and whatnot. And of course, uh, flexible working hours in a larger degree and so on. So I think we'll see that they, they will have to conform, but they really don't want to. It's cheaper as well, isn't it, to give up the office space? 
those buildings cost a lot of money, don't they? Yeah. To yeah. Run. And I mean, they should be able to see the the productivity go down because when you go to the office, as you say, people stand around chatting, and I mean that. I mean that's mostly the reason why I go into the office is actually hang out with the, my work colleagues that I actually like. Because I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can sit around and and chit chat for for an hour or so and <laughs> not do any work and then you feel like oh i know i'm gonna work from home tomorrow because i actually need to get shit done but then again that's the goal permanent home office aka self-employed <laughs> <laughs> i mean the, the the goal is getting the money without having to do the job <laughs> talking about um self-employed yeah have you been uh, making some stock for your shop uh no um but i have done inventory so i now know uh, how many i have parts for and then of course i uh i capped the inventory on the web shop at that level so uh, i can't well it hasn't been a single order yet so there's no danger there <laughs> but at least uh, if someone orders uh, a 10 coffee pot holders i uh i can deliver quite fast have you marked those pieces as well so you don't actually take them for another project? Or is there a separate <laughs> bin or... Um, shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, I needed some frames for the the heating cable table, so yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not using oak for that. Um, yeah, but that's another issue. Of course, I have the main dimension of the coffee pot holders are actually because that's a standard width of uh, the materials at our local lumber yard. Uh, and at some point I would like to have like a, a proper bandsaw with resaw capacity and a jointer thicknesser because then I can cut the cost on wood and actually get it down to the dimension I need myself. But yeah, that's for another day. Don't get a charm wood uh, plane of thickness. Sir. I don't recommend them. <laughs> oh, don't you don't you know a cheap one for sale? <laughs> Light uh, fixer upper. <laughs> Very energy efficient. Yeah. <laughs> Saves you energy all around the home. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's um. I've been looking at the the Metabo has one um, that actually in several tests is just as good, if not better than the Devault that everyone is using. Um, but then again, do I want to get a combined one uh, and just spend a little more, more money and get one with uh, the helical head just from the get go or I'm not sure, and there is this company who sells them that have them on sale. So I'm I'm really thinking hard about it, and uh, do I actually need the bigger combined one, or and most likely not. I could probably be better off getting the smaller thicknesser and actually getting a drum sander for the same price of one combined uh, thickness or jointer planer thingamabob. What do you need a drum sander for? Are you going to start making chopping boards? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a few of the items um, have a flat, the big surfaces. And then, of course, if I can just <laughs> send them through without uh, doing any sanding, it's like... Uh, but yeah, a drum sander is very specific for uh, flat objects and... It is a bit pricey. I can do a lot of sanding for those money, but you know, still, it's it's a tool. It got a motor on it and some spinning yeah. things, so it's uh, <laughs> it's very tantalizing. <laughs> and how oh, you got yeah. some room in your workshop? <laughs> so <laughs> you need affiliates. Yeah, yeah, I, I got a, a lot of room suddenly, so now I can get. Uh, <laughs> well, I saw the 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 CNC on the sale uh, for the liquidator company that uh, you showed me. It's uh, it's getting too pricey now, so it's not an option. Uh, it's a bit much. Oh, yeah. I thought KJ had bought it for his birthday. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, my my birthday present for myself this year was the angle grinder I bought a couple Ooh. of weeks back. 
that's a project for you. You can build yourself an angle grinder. That would be cool. <laughs> Wind your own motor and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah you, you can really go <laughs> deep down, but uh, yeah. I really should build myself a new angle grinder. I've only got seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the world's largest or world's most powerful angle grinder. I mean, if you if you are using cable, yeah. you can have three faces, a huge motor, a hundred horsepower <laughs> angle grinder. <laughs> Need to be two persons to carry it. Hundred and fifty thousand RPM. <laughs> I think you said it last week, actually, KJ. It's about setting yourself up for a competition you could win. So maybe just, <laughs> maybe just start out with, "I'm going to make the world's crappiest angle grinder." <laughs> yeah, that's probably where we'll end up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an it's an electrical motor and a switch and uh angle gear and a chuck yeah i mean that's mm -hmm. uh how hard can it be <laughs> i mean it's uh, the, the angled uh, gearing that that thing is the is the hardest thing I, I think to get right yeah because damn it has to be precise at those speeds <laughs> but i see some of the 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 motors for uh like drones and so on, they are, they are getting ridiculously powerful, and you can then you don't have to have the angle gear. You can just mount the motor aligned with the disc, and that spins like crazy fast. And I mean, if you, they're more than powerful enough, I think, because you, you just have the angular momentum when you get the speed. So the more speed, yeah. the more momentum. So <laughs> yeah, but then you get go into the the horrible sides i mean have you seen the, the exploding uh, discs yeah uh, that uh, yeah, yeah you, you need the cover on <laughs> for this <yeah>. one <laughs> the, the uh, uh, behind the press channel uh the hydraulic press second channel where they stuck uh, grinder discs on routers and sped them up to insanity <laughs> to watch them explode yeah those are re those are really good people should check those out I've, I've also seen <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what you could do and this has also been done uh, taking cds and bolting them to angle grinders and then of course uh, filming that in slow motion because you get the right before the break you get this wobbling sensation so it looks really <laughs> psychedelic and then just it explodes it's like uh it's like a hand grenade <laughs> so yeah that sounds like a fun cleanup yeah that sounds like fun <laughs> I've got a treadmill at the side of me now. I often wondered whether I could just sort of dual purpose that as a drum sander. Yeah, that I've seen done. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, someone yeah, did that, sander. and they angle, and they gr the ground down an entire guitar or something like that. Just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it just disappeared. <laughs> I bet they did it, was... it better than what I was thinking. I was just thinking about sticking sheets of sandpaper to the actual to the actual treadmill as opposed to a roll, just singular sheets. <laughs> I'm not sure how they did it. If they, I think it was some kind of big belt that actually fitted on there. Yeah, so that's too. Yeah. Wasn't it? Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I would I put glue, glue on it and then just uh, gravel. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Old they make sandpaper. Sand, sandpaper. <laughs> yeah. Five, five grit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not that abrasive stuff. Just <laughs> make some from the yard. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Isn't that how they make sandpaper? I mean, it's, it's, it's probably just some glue and sand. It's in the name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the glue's not in the name. That's uh, yeah, that's true. But that's a that's an oddly specific video for the woodworking community. Well, I'm making my own sandpaper, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like uh, going through the process of actually making the paper as well uh, in the water solution and siphoning it off, and then just grinding your own sand, and then uh, making your glue from yeah you know, whatever wood sap. And <laughs> <laughs> are you a real woodworker if you don't make your own sandpaper? <laughs> it's like uh, I. I don't know how the saying goes. I mean, 
you can hold it against someone for not knowing what you just learned yesterday, something like that. And it's like the same if you if you just make your own sandpaper, then you just instantly judge every other woodworker. It's like, what? You don't make your own sandpaper? I mean, <laughs> are you even a woodworker? <laughs> How can you make sanding more unpleasurable? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that could be a fun challenge. How, how to make uh, sanding more pleasurable? Then you can see some of the creative takes on on sanding. That could be kinky. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, Danny's doing. No, KJ. Okay, no, no butter. <laughs> no butter. That doesn't help. <laughs> That's for polishing. <laughs> Danny's DIY shed posted a video just today on him trying to make sanding more pleasurable. He was just dancing while he was uh, sanding it. Uh, it didn't make it more pleasurable for me, I've got to say. Oh, that uh, If it were a competition, that would be a 9 out of a 10. I mean, just yeah. dancing while sanding, that's, uh, you need to up your game. <laughs> I, I feel yeah. that would affect my sanding too much. I wouldn't pay attention and just dig down on one place and not get it even. I mean, you could do it just by, um, you know, altering the environment in which you're standing in, you know, put your disco ball up and some good tunes in your ears. Maybe that would make it more pleasurable. <laughs> or see if you can incorporate Fat Tuesday into sanding. Yeah. And then, of course, it's every boring task is best carried out while you're doing something else, like a part of a multitasking. And then, of course... If you have a battery-powered orbital sander, you you don't have to confine yourself to your workshop. So then, can you do sanding while showering or out driving a car? You can just sand out of the window. I mean, there's a. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I wondered where this was going to go from. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was yeah, I mean, it's a it's an orbital sander. It it vibrates real good. So. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave the rest to the imagination. <laughs> yeah, that's something for the ne next video where you have some a lot of sanding to do. Just like those who, who are dancing all over the world. They're doing the same dance moves when they're standing in front of the Taj Mahal or in New York and that sort of thing. You're sanding the same piece with a blank oh, stare in your fantastic. face but different in different places oh the, the wife is going to be happy about that one why are you bringing an orbital sander on every vacation we are going on that would be so much fun <laughs> it's for a video darling yeah. <laughs> and then it's like a video and like look it's the eiffel tower and then they just zoom out and then like <laughs> 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 i love that idea i think that's great I think the uh, some tool is definitely going to have to come on holiday with me every year now for the next decade. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a I'm going to make a strap for my orbital sanders. So I can carry it with me, and then I can just bring it to uh... <laughs> like a handbag. <laughs> yeah, bring it to Maker Central next year, and just a, a pocket full of eighty grit. <laughs> You need, other you need some sand on that. it for you. That's that's <laughs> yeah. a good one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bobby Duke, can you just sand this for me a bit? <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'll make a lot of blanks. Then I set up a booth at Scarpet Festival and then I just have a sanding competition. And then, uh, like, <laughs> how fast can you sand this? And I just time it and I put up a scoreboard. And by the end of the day, I've got a lot of people sanding for me. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I flip it and sell it the next day that's that's brilliant maybe i should set that's... up the router table as well how fast can you make uh, a butter knife <laughs> <laughs> brilliant but that when we are on to competition um of course i made that uh, miniature food truck last summer and of course yep. we we're keeping it for the kids for a couple of years until they grow tired of it and then i thought i could just add steering to it and i can enter the um uh like the red bull uh downhill uh car challenge they have one soapbox now in every country race. yeah soapbox race but then as a joke uh last week i said well the the organ has wheels so and I got the mental image of just going down the hill 
in this full penguin tuxedo, just playing an appropriate tune. <laughs> and of course, you, you need to have a set of rear wheels and some way of steering that. So one needs to play and one needs to to be the driver. And of course, Glenn volunteered to be the, the co-driver. <laughs> so I've been thinking more and more. I, I really want to enter into that soapbox race. I'm not thinking it's going to be the one this summer because it, I think it needs a good year planning. So you, you need to just at some point have the decision and then it's the one the year after that. But then again, if I'm going to use the organ, it's going to have to be the one in Oslo because the transportation is going to be uh, <laughs> it's a it's nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I need to uh, I need to read the rules because there are some limitations to uh, the size, so it might be a bit too wide. But I'm not sure. And of course, if you if you pitch them the idea, they might uh, okay, we'll let this one fly because we want to see it happen. <laughs> because it's it's twists and turns, and there's always a jump which is gonna kill it. So <laughs> you need a lot of padding. Well, Colin first rode a a laptop down the course, didn't he? That was about that was at least two meters wide. No, yeah. should be fine. Yeah, it's not two meters wide, so it should be no. nice. Yeah. It's just a slight danger element of if it lands on top of you, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah, I that's, bet not, that's not that's not worth worrying about. No, I mean you can't get caught up in health and safety when you're participating in <laughs> soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only requirement is a helmet, but yeah, I think I would, uh, I would wear every piece of motorcycle garment I own. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good plan. I got rid of all mine. All I've got is a cycling helmet. Yeah, I should do. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't have anything more to protect. Yeah. <laughs> But of course we could, it's always on a weekend, so if you take one day off, so we can make it a oval weekend, and then it's two days with uh, beer and building in the workshop, and how far we get until the the race day, that's how far we get, and we just shove it down the hill and see what's happened. And then, Sounds fantastic. Yeah, content. Yeah. I mean... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be brilliant. Then we should actually get... Uh, some people to actually film <laughs> from the side as well. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would That's be fine. Fun. I can film you when you go down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to go first because it's like uh, when they're filming these car movies. You need a chase car going in front with a camera. <laughs> 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 so you're gonna go on a skateboard backwards, <laughs> backwards, <laughs> while uh, <laughs> while ho- holding all our cameras. <laughs> I love the idea of a chase car going first. <laughs> <laughs> Being chased by a pedal organ. That's a that's a terrifying sight. <laughs> that sounds like a bad dream. <laughs> uh, on that note, I think we will end this episode. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you. See you next time. Uh, see you next time at race day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>